Hello everybody, this is going to be part three of our Unity Basics lesson. So if you have been following along, we should be here right now. We have a player on the road and we have this little floating sphere in the background. And if we were to press play at the moment, we could drive our little player and it could also fall off. So what we want to do right now is just add some more functionality to this and make it a little bit more dynamic. So let's go to our notes. The first things that we're gonna do is let's actually use up this uh, space a little better. So we're gonna move the sphere in front of the player. So I'm gonna move that sphere that was hanging out in the back. I'm gonna move it in front of the player and I'm using my shortcut keys to orbit around here, holding down Alt or Option and let's go ahead and also make it a little bit smaller. Remember that we can use Q, W, E, R to quickly resize. So I'm going to use R to make it a lot smaller, W to bring it down, and I'm going to put it on the road like that. And I might even make it a little bit smaller. Ideally, what I'm doing with this uh, little sphere is making it into a an obstacle that I can avoid as I drive. So it doesn't need to be too big, but big enough that it'll be a challenge to drive around. And if you hold down your center mouse button as you drag, it becomes the pan tool, which I really like. And that looks cool to me. I think that looks pretty cool. So the other thing I want to do is take my player and also go ahead and make this a little bit uh, smaller. Pardon me as I get a good view. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink this one down as well. Because if it takes up too much room, we won't really be able to see much. Um, so let's make it smaller. And that's pretty cool. Small little player and an obstacle in the middle of the road. So what we can do now is we have something to run into. So if we press save right now and press play, we should be able to drive our little guy into that obstacle. And that's cool. Now you imagine if you had many obstacles on the road, you could bump into them or drive around them. And that could be as easy as just copying the player, which is something you can do when you're done here. Now let's go ahead and change the color of the sphere so things start to become a little bit more alive. So what we're going to do is going to go into our materials folder. Now I already have done this stuff so pardon me here but I'm just going to redo it again. So in the materials folder I'm going to right click create material and for now I'm just going to call it sphere 3. You could call it sphere 1 but I'm just going to call it sphere 3 and I'm going to pick a color by going up here to the albedo and let's go with a darker green this time. And then once you've uh, gotten the color for sphere three, you can just literally drag that over to your sphere and now you've got a green obstacle. So super easy, just adding a color. Now the next thing we're going to add to this game is we're going to make a projectile that's going to be able to shoot from our player. So let's say there's a lot of obstacles on the road and you want to get rid of them, you can just throw these projectiles. So I'm going to make something that looks like a frisbee next. A frisbee, if you've never had seen one, is just you know, those little thin things that we throw around when we're at the park. So what I'm going to do next is right click and I'm going to make a 3D object and this time I'm going to make a capsule. Now the capsule is huge when it comes in, which is totally normal. So bring it down into the world. And now that we have it here, let's really shrink this guy a lot because I wanna make it a Frisbee, not a big pill. So I'm going to use my shortcut keys if I use the R key, I can squish it down. So I'm going to squish it down a lot. Then move it a little bit closer to my player. And 
it's a little tricky to get the best angle. There we go. And I think actually I probably just want a little bit more working space. There we go. And then using R to use the center controller to shrink it down even more. Great. So this is pretty cool. Um, it's just a small little projectile. It's going to shoot out of the uh, player. Now, I don't want to get it too close. And again, everybody, I'm simplifying some stuff here, and I'm not really that good at coding, as I've already mentioned to you. So I'm going to try to do this the easiest way that we can get away with it to avoid any problems. So that's why I'm not going to have it actually touch the cube. I'm going to give some room to it. Um, I discovered earlier that there were some problems when things were too close together and the physics, they start, it starts to get weird. They start to bounce off each other. But for now, we've got the capsule. Let's go ahead and change that name to projectile. And then let's go ahead and also give it a color so we can see that a little better. So in our materials folder, right click, create material. And here, I'm just gonna call this projectile, and I'll just call it projectile two, because I already named it before. And I'm gonna pick a color in my albedo, and how about a bright orange? Cool, now I'm gonna take that color and drag it onto the projectile. So I now have this the orange uh, projectile coming out of the player, and the goal is to be able to shoot this thing across. So now what we want to do is add the script so that we can actually shoot it. So let's take a look at the projectile um, and we're going to need to add a script here. So let's go to our scripts folder and I've already created this and the script is going to be called follow player. You can go into the notes or excuse me, my bad, take that back. It's called move forward and you can go into my notes and copy it. So move forward. If we take a look at the coding for this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna move this projectile forward and it has a speed control as well. So, this little window is so annoying, it never wants to go away. Okay, anyway. Um, Pardon me, everybody. <laughs> anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the move forward script, which I have here in my notes. So if you're gonna do this at home, you're gonna right click, you're gonna go to create, you're gonna go to C sharp script, and you're gonna type move forward. And you're gonna do it in one shot. Make sure you don't do any spaces. So move forward. Now I'm not gonna do that right now because I already have done it. So I don't want to ruin it, but in your in your case, you're going to make a new script and type move forward, capital M and capital F. And then you're going to grab the code that I've given you here and paste it in there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take that move forward script and you're going to drag it onto the projectile. Now what that's going to do is it's going to make the projectile shoot forward. Let's test it. It might go in the wrong direction, depending if you might have rotated your um, capsule in some weird way. So let's double check. Let's press play. We should see that projectile just fly out. Now it goes so fast you might not have noticed it. So you might want to go back in here and adjust the speed. Maybe let's give it, just make it real slow for now. We'll do a speed of 10. Press play. And there it goes. Shooting out at a, at a lower rate. Now one thing that we can think about when we're creating this new projectile is we want to make sure it can actually hit stuff. So right now when we press play and test it and shoots out, it might not have any contact or do much to that other object. So why not? Let's go ahead and add a rigid body to the projectile. So projectile, and we're going to go to add component, rigid body. Now let's give it a whirl. And you can see it hits the little ball. So again, what I did everybody on projectile, I've done two things so far, dragged the move forward script onto there. You're copying my notes here to create the script. And then I also added a rigid body to it so that it can collide with other stuff because now it has um, 
the force of gravity. So see, it can push things out of the way as we're driving, which is awesome. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to use this projectile as something that we can actually shoot a whole bunch of times. And we don't want it to actually live here if we want to do that. We want to make what's known as a prefab. So you're going to go into your, to your assets. You're going to right click. You're going to create a new folder, folder. And you're going to call this folder prefabs, P-R-E-F-A-B-S. I've already done that, but you're going to do that right now. Inside of assets, right click, create folder, and call it prefabs, P-R-E-F-A-B-S. Now inside of prefabs, you're going to take your projectile, and I'm actually just for my practice here so we don't get confused, I'm going to call this projectile 2. And projectile 2, okay, that's I'm just doing that because I, I've already done this lesson, but I don't want to confuse you. I'm going to take projectile 2 and I'm going to drag this now into the prefabs folder. Now, when it goes into this folder, prefabs, what's interesting about this is that now you can use this to repeat many times. This is how we can make things like bullets or enemies or objects that fall from the sky, whatever it is. Things that are going to be repeated a lots of times, you're going to want to put them in the prefabs folder. So, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and adjust the script here now in our player controller so that we can actually shoot this little projectile. Because right now, if you press play, moving it hasn't done anything. It still just sits there. But what we want to do is make it so that it, it can be shot from our player. So we're going to go into our player, and in our player script, what we're going to do is we're going to add some new stuff to the player script. And this stuff is here. It's under projectile control. We're going to make two public things that we can look at in the inspector window. And this right here is going to launch the projectile. So I've already done this. So go ahead and go to your player. Double click on player controller. When it opens up, go ahead and copy my notes here and just literally just copy paste this all and you're going to want to copy paste it over everything that you typed in last week and it should work type grabbing that whole thing and tape uh, pasting it in there now what happens if you do this which is interesting is that now when you press play you will be able to shoot stuff, but you'll notice we get an error and we get an error because we got to do one thing before we can actually make it work. So let's go to our player and let's take a look at these two empty public things, project, projectile prefab and player. The reason it's not working is it doesn't know what, the, what it is that you want to shoot. And I created this code some of you might find it really wrong, and I'm sure it might be kind of weird, but it definitely works. Um, that way I could reference the position of the player. So I'm going to grab player and drag it into player. And I'm going to drag projectile and put it into projectile. Okay. If you do those two things, and now press play, you should be able to shoot a whole bunch of projectiles. Now what's interesting about this is you can keep shooting projectiles, but you'll notice that as I shoot, it keeps adding stuff to my file, which would slow us down if we were really playing this game. So we have to now add another script that's going to destroy the projectiles as they leave the screen. So we're going to add a destroy script. So in your script folder, Right click, create, new script, call this one destroy out of bounds, all one word, capital D, capital O, capital O, capital B, destroy out of bounds, and go ahead and copy the code that I have in my notes.
Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that destroy out of bounds and we're going to apply it to our projectile. Take destroy out of bounds because you want the projectile to destroy when it passes a certain boundary, a top boundary and a lower boundary, which you can modify these. And once you put it on, we can start to experiment. So take destroy out of bounds and drag it onto projectile two. So now projectile two is gonna have the move forward script and a destroy out of bounds script. And you'll notice that the top bound and lower bound, these are values that I created here uh, to, to, to decide when it should disappear from the screen. And the reason we do this is because we can't have it existing forever on the screen because your computer would probably crash because you, if you kept shooting, it would just go on forever. So let's press play. Oh, and actually, pardon me, one important thing. If we make a modification like we just did here by adding a destroy out of brown script to our projectile, what's interesting, and, and this is very important, is we have it here on our screen in the hierarchy, but we also have it in the prefabs. We have to make sure that if we add something here in the hierarchy, that it automatically updates in the prefabs. So once we added, let's go back to what we just did. We were in scripts. We, we had made destroy out of bounds. We added it to the projectile. Everything looks cool, but you got to do one important thing. Go over here to overrides in your hierarchy, and you're going to say apply all, because you'll notice it's saying, hey, you added a script here, but you didn't add it to the prefab version. So let's do apply all. And now we're good. Press save. Let's press play. And now you'll notice that if you shoot, they're going to disappear after a while. Now it might be hard to see, so I'm going to pull my camera back a little bit. But before these things were falling forever, you remember if we had a really long list of stuff that was happening. So let's get back to it here. And you see that eventually they disappear off the screen. They don't last forever, which is good. It's not making a super long list. And we're good. And it looks like we might have a little bit of an error here. So let's take a look at projectile number two, destroy out of bounds. And I might need to go ahead and, and figure that out for you guys. But for now, everybody, that should get us there. And for those of you who might be able to find out what the issue was, please let me know. Like I said, I'm not really a master of the scripting. There's probably got to be something in here that is probably messed up. And I'll come back and I'll, I'll check in on that. But that'll get us pretty far, everybody. Um, let's go ahead and experiment. Those of you who are better at coding and have more experience, you can probably tell me what I might have done wrong there that's not letting me shoot them uh, forever. And have a great time with this, everybody. All the notes are on the blog. And this is, a, you know, again, we're just going and doing some basics here. We're gonna keep just practicing different things. But this is, you know, we built quite a lot now. And you can have a lot of fun with this. Experiment with adding um, the move forward script to the spheres. And you know what, if this is weird, if it's not working, like if this is annoying that, that they're dying for now, you know what, we can just remove it. And then it won't give us those errors anymore because we can just shoot forever, right? And if you just want to have some fun and play the game now, let's take it for a spin, right? We can drive around and while shooting, right? And it's pretty cool. And we could make more enemies for ourselves by dragging more of the spheres onto the screen. One thing you could do um, is take your sphere that you've created and drag it into your prefabs folder because then what's cool about that is it's something that you could also add some scripting to. So this is where you know you can really start to make some experiments of what other things could I do with this? 
For example, you could make it so that they randomly appear. And all this stuff, you can just kind of Google some Unity um, shortcuts and there's things for spawning. That would be how you could create a whole bunch of them all over uh, the ground. And yeah, experiment. And even another experiment, for example, while we're here is our sphere. We could add our script for moving to the sphere. But what happened if we did that? Let's, let's experiment. If we did that, now you're gonna see that the ball's gonna go away from us, but if we wanted the ball to, to kind of attack us, what we could do is let's actually change the rotation of the sphere. So what I just did here in this last step, and this is just experimenting now, I took the move forward script, I added it to the sphere, so that now when I press play, this, this, the sphere is also dri driving away. But what I wanna do is make that sphere turn around. So I'm gonna go to my rotation and do 180 degrees, and now I press play, and now it'll come towards me. Now it's coming towards me so fast I can barely see it, so let's change the speed of that. How about let's change it down to five? So it'll be a slow moving target. And you see it's gonna bump into me. So it might be cool to experiment with having multiple spheres on the screen and then you have to drive around them. So if we did something like that, Actually, let's go to prefabs. I'm gonna add a few here. That's gonna be a little bit messy right now just because I'm doing this quickly. Okay. You see how they're all coming to me now? So now if I was playing the game, I could be having to drive around, around them and maybe shooting them as I go so that they get out of my way. And I know you can have a lot of fun with that. So experiment, all the notes are on the blog. And if you can figure out what I did wrong there with that, um, with my projectiles running out of bullets, let's figure that out. All right, everybody, have a great time doing this.